Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro and this is the Temple of Surf, the podcast will give you full access to the best surfers, skaters, shapers, surfboard collectors, shop owners in the world. Discover with me their stories, the greatest successes, amazing behind the scenes and much more. Aloha! Welcome to the fifth series of the Temple of Surf, the podcast. We prepare for you 25 new and very exciting episodes. World champion, surfer, surfboard shaper and a special session dedicated to Italian surfers and surf culture. Stay tuned, I hope you will enjoy. Mahalo! The first episode of our season has a very special guest, surf legend David Noiva. that discover more about him, his story, his incredible career and much more. Hello, Mr. David. Welcome to the show. Where are you today? I am in Huntington Beach at the U.S. Open Surfing uh, Champions in Huntington. Ah, amazing moment over there in Huntington Beach. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's fantastic. How is it going for so far, in, order, in your opinion? Uh, the contest is doing, going good. Uh, besides, you know, not having too much surf, you know, I guess it's going okay. <laughs> it's always it's always like years and years of tournaments here with 250,000 people, and this year because of the COVID nineteen, all everything went smaller. Of course, it's expected, right? But uh, it, surf- yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's just you know, recently started to open up, you know, to the more and more people. Yeah, little by little, we we'll go back to the normality. You know, we have uh, to, exactly. to hang tight for for a while. Um, yeah, today we're gonna talk about a lot about you. Uh, many things that I want to ask you, but the first thing is, uh, in your opinion, what is the most important thing in surfing? Most important thing, uh, you know, it comes back during the Hawaiian history. You know. When Duke Onomoko uh, took it all over the world and showed the world how what surfing was, it was mainly about just having fun, you know, on a surfboard in the ocean. There was no cameras, none of that stuff, you know, going on, and people really liked it. And that's the most important thing I can think of, you know, with the way uh, nowadays it's all different, you know. Uh, it's all about mechanical uh, surfers in the water. They're pretty much all trained to do one thing, you know. Yeah. But the real important thing is uh, they should just go out and have fun. Exactly. Exactly. We we have always to remember that, right? Professional yeah. Yeah. surfers or like, let's say, Sunday surfers. Most important thing yeah. is to have that smile on the face and yeah, take the family out and just relax and have a good day in the ocean. You know, yes. that's the way I was brought up. Exactly, exactly. I totally agree with you. And if there were less cameras, most probably it would be much better, right? If you look at oh, yes. your Instagram yeah. today. You get the you get the real meaning out of surfing, you know, when you go out and just, you know, just relax and have fun and just ride a few waves and you know, you don't have to compete with all uh, the big guys, you know. Yeah. I've been on that trail before and, you know, it's fun, but after a while you get a little burned out on it. And, uh, you know, like today everybody's posting uh, wa- uh, videos of perfect waves, but not so many they're posting videos of wipeout or, or so it looks like yeah. the surf out there is always perfect and it's always great, right? <laughs> While in the reality it's not. <laughs> I grew up in uh, Hawaii when I was a little boy, and uh, my dad used to be a beach boy, and that's how I started uh, surfing, you know? Yeah, he yeah. Used me, uh, he used to loan me these giant surfboards, and I was uh, probably about 35 pounds, and I jumped on them and rode them. Let's talk about these giant surfboards. What was your well, uh, first professional surfboard? Uh, was back during 1960, I'd say, five, 66. Okay. And it was in Hawaii, and uh, I learned how to ride those. And then when I came to California, uh, we we started riding in, uh, you know, big surfboards. They weighed like 35 pounds, and they were out of control. <laughs> <laughs> totally, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, you stand up turn and the board went one way and you went the other way because you were so light you couldn't turn them yeah 
exactly they were too heavy for the for the sports but they were fast right yeah yeah and then we started playing around and got the boards down and size and all that and then uh, we took off you know going faster and doing more things and you were shipping your own boards or i heard right no no i've, I've always had shapers to make all my own boards personal shapers you know that built most of my stuff and it was like I had about six, seven different kinds of boards, you know, big, small, all different range. And was that one that you particularly like? Uh, they, I like them all because they're like golf. You understand golf? Yes, there's of a club, I do. There's a, yeah, there's a club that you can drive balls with and there's a club you putt with. Yes. Then there's the in-between ones that you use to get down the you know, more yardage and less yardage. and Yeah, so all my surfboards are pretty much geared like golf. And do you still have some of them or they just like disappear with the time? When I started out as a kid, I rode big boards and the kids I was hanging around, they were my age and we were all small and their parents used to make their own surfboards which were small boards. So I had I had the luxury of growing up with the small and the big. Okay, okay, okay. But you still have some of those boards or or, or not? Oh, no, no. Okay. Um, in your opinion, what was the defining moment of your career as a surfer? Uh, that would be, uh, God, when uh, I was on the pier in Huntington Beach and I was winning and I was a, a U.S. surfing champion. And I got a chance to meet Duke Kahanamoko. Wow. He had a Rolls Royce back in the day. Uh, he, they drove up on the pier. And I was looking at the surf because I was going to go in. And I turned around and uh, there was this Rolls Royce with uh, four really, really good surfers that he had with him from Hawaii. And they were world champion surfer Fred Hemmings. Uh, Joey Cabell and uh, Butch Van Arsdale and one more uh, that was in the car, Paul Strout. And those were Duke's four, four guys that we called the Four Horsemen. Wow. They pulled up on the pier and I they introduced me to Duke, you know, and I was just a kid and I just got done winning the U.S. Open. Amazing. Wow. What a moment for any surfer, right? And you particularly... That would be the highlight of my life, you know, was that day I met him. Yes. And you met also a lot of other surfers during your uh, your, your career, during your life. Was there yep. another meeting like uh, that was particularly meaningful for you? Uh, would be, well, most of them, I, you know, I traveled up and down the coast. So I met most of the best guys in the world, you know, in California. You know, and then I met world guys like Nat Young from Australia and Felipe Palmar from Peru back then. And uh, a lot of good surfers, Mickey Dora, Dewey Weber, all the guys that were the top name guys on the West Coast. I met them all and I, I surfed with them all. I used to ride some of their boards, you know, and all of those people like Hobie that invited, uh, invented Hobie catamarans and all kinds of stuff. Not only uh, great surfers, like you said, but also uh, music celebrities, right? Like Jimmy no, Hendrix. The music, the music part came, uh, came in uh, probably in the late 60s. I uh, ran into a lot of people as I was traveling all over the world, New York and all over. I met a lot of interesting people, you know, uh, like recent one was uh, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. I did a movie. With, I did a movie with Jimi Hendrix uh, right before he died. We shot it in Maui. It's called Rainbow Bridge. And I did the surfing in that and uh, had a chance to, you know, see what he was like. He was quite a dude. What was a, your what is the, your best memory of him? Uh, probably, I was more shocked, you know, that he was uh, going to do the movie and I was surfing in the movie and he was doing the music to it. Yeah, it's like unique, right? Yeah, it was like, wow, you know, here's the heaviest guitar player and rock and roll star in the world and I'm hooked in with him. 
that was really a, an honor for me, you know, to be around that. Things like that do not happen uh, anymore, right? No, no, it doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> the world Those are the good changed. old days. Those are the good old days. I mean, I partied with a lot of them, you know, like uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen back in uh, New Jersey. I partied with him. I didn't know that he surfed. I met him at a friend of mine's shop in Long Branch, New Jersey. And and I put, the guy introduced me to him, and it was Bruce Springsteen before he got real big, you know, on the East Coast. Wow. And I met people like Eric Burton, you know, from the Animals and uh, – Friends of mine used to play music, uh, the drummer of uh, the Yardbirds and uh, all these different groups, you know, like Paul Butterfield, old blues player. You should uh, write a, a book out uh, surf and rock and roll music uh, have been uh, interconnected in a way. I am writing a book and they're all in it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. So let's talk about the book. When is going to be released? You, you. We, well, which... it's for me. It's for me growing up in Hawaii, learning all that, and then moving to California, getting stuck here, you know, surfing, and and then, uh, you know, I pretty much ate out of trash cans and lived on people's couches, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. That was couch <laughs> couch sharing, right? Today is very famous. Oh, yeah, I was a little kid. I was a little kid, like 16 years old, and I ran into their, their little kids, and they go, hey, come over to the house and spend a night, <laughs> or whatever. <Yeah. laughs> and they found out that you're staying in their house maybe for, for weeks. <laughs> well, the parents didn't care. It was a different lifestyle back then. You know, people back then, you know, they would take you in and take care of you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They wouldn't say, oh, God, you know, you've been here too long. You got to go. You know? <laughs> no. Like it. it was all different. You, you are part of the family. So that's good. Yeah. So that's pretty much, you know, how everything happened, you know, and all of a sudden you know, people started taking notice of what I was doing in the water. But I've been doing that all my life when I was a little kid. And so they picked up on it. Next thing I know, oh, God, I had surfboards traveling. I was all over the place. When the book will be released? I still got a lot to write. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm, okay. I've been working on it for the last two, three months, and uh, it's hard. I miss a lot of stuff, so I keep adding into it and putting this here and that here and all the surfers that I grew up with. And, I got to get everybody in it. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be like a, a big, a big book. Definitely. Uh, well, I was, think, I was thinking of, uh, you know, breaking it into maybe six different chapters. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's six chapters. Yeah. It's okay. No, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah. not, yeah. it's not bad. And anyway, it's going to be a fun book, right? History of life, but also yeah. history of uh, yeah. of the world back then. So that's definitely something. Yeah, I don't want to bore people, you know, I, you know, they could pr pick up chapter one, there'd, there'd be 50 yeah. things in it, chapter two, another 50. Exactly. They can discover every chapter according to their uh, lifetime or their uh, uh, the, the time of, uh, you know, like it's not that they have to read it all in once, uh, right? There's a lot of different stories. Like when I was a kid, I used to work for the circus in Hawaii <laughs> and I stole five elephants and took them home to my dad and he about beat my brains in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the trainer of the circus. They live. They were doing a show right across uh, about four uh, blocks away from my house. So I was feeding them water and, and, you know, walking them around and cleaning them. And I just happened to drift over a couple of blocks to my house. <laughs> I can you, can you imagine the face of your of your father when he saw elephants coming oh, you across. Should have seen, <laughs> you should have seen what he did in my butt. <laughs> Uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, uh, reading about you in um, uh, in uh, internet, where I found information about you before this interview, they're saying that you are a legend. Do you consider yourself one? 
Well, nowadays in time, yeah, because uh, most of the guys who were legend, they're all gone now. I'm scared to pick up my phone every day because somebody is passing away, you know? Yeah, all the good so. guys that I used to run around with, they're all gone. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's sad, but it's part of life, right? But uh, Yeah, yeah. But legend yeah. is something much more than uh, just being old, right? It is, uh, right. He's right. leaving a footprint uh, in the history, and uh, yes. you did it for the surf that you that you had, for the for the boards that you were riding, for the people you met, right? Oh yes, I met so many different people, and uh, you know, people at one time they were looking up to me, you know, as oh yeah, you know, he's got long hair, he drives a big car, and all that, you know. But yeah. you know, it was fun. it was back in the time when it was uh, it was cool. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it was like amazing uh, looking at it today. Uh, you should also write a chapter of the cars you had because I heard you had quite a lot of uh, you had a quiver of uh, surfboard, but also of uh, cars between Rolls Royce, Jaguar. Did I hear it well? Well, yeah, back then, you know, it was uh, surfing was really poor. There wasn't no money in it when I kind of came in. And all my friends had old broken down cars with the back seats out. And they used to put surfboards in the trunk. You know, that's how we drove them around. And as it progressed and I was getting more attention, you know, I started... You know, I like cars, so I started moving up in cars. And next thing I know, friends of mine in Hollywood were coming down in Rolls Royces, and I was putting racks on their cars with yeah. Rolls Royces, you know, and surfboard cruising around. Everybody would freak out. <laughs> Not bad, right? <laughs> yeah, but, well, yeah, we were just kind of having fun, you know, showing uh, the rest of the rich people, hey, look, you know, we're in a Rolls Royce with surfboards on it. Exactly. <laughs> Not exactly the Rolls Royce that the Duke was in, but still <laughs> very fun, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun, you know, going up and down the highway and surfing in all the different uh, little surf towns up and down the coast and traveling all over the world. You know, it was kind of neat. Yeah, of course. So, but I'm good, glad that you were able to to have that uh, chapter as well in uh, in uh, in your history book. Let's say, let's talk about shapers. Uh, so you you as you said at the beginning, you had several shapers shaping for you. Uh, Bing yeah. Takayama. You said Obi. Uh, oh yeah, they were they were great shapers, you know. Like Bing was one of them. Uh, Dick Brewer was another one. There was uh, Jacobs, uh, all the top name guys, you know. They were all making boards, and I had a chance to ride for most of them, you know. Amazing. And uh, uh, if you had to, to to share a memory, let's say of uh, of uh, Donald Takayama. Uh, oh yeah, he he was like my my little older brother. Uh, although I was taller than him, you know. <laughs> yes, but he was like my my older brother. You know, he took care of me back then when I was a kid, and and him and I used to get you know gang up on on the surfing industry. Like when the shortboards came in. And I was riding a fish, you know, back then. Donald yeah. asked me one day, he goes, hey, you know what? The short boards are stopping all the older guys from going in the water, you know. So uh, would you be uh, interested in doing a big push on uh, long boards while the short boards were coming in and the older guys that rode them all over the world, they were giving up because they couldn't paddle them, you know. So... Donald approached me on, hey, you know, let's see if we can get the, the long boards back in the game. And we did stuff like that. And, uh, and it worked pretty good. You know, there's a lot of long borders and short borders now instead of just all short border. Yeah. The, if if there was only short border, it would not be completely fun, right? The sense of uh, surf is surf with the. Uh, uh, with, with uh, different uh, surfboard and with different style and with different ability, yeah. right? Well, you no, know, like I told you in the beginning, you know, yeah. you know, it, you got to have fun with it. If you don't, then you shouldn't be doing it. 
Exactly. Like a, a bit everything else in life, right? If you don't have yeah. fun, you should not be doing. But of course, uh, most of the people have to uh, pay for, for food, right? So they end up doing things that they don't necessarily like. But surf, I guess, <laughs> you are not. You don't have like a, a gun on your, uh, on your uh, forehead, right? You do it only for the fun. You should. Yeah. Yeah, you should do it that way, you know, and then uh, if you're getting good, then you can be like what I did. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Legendary story. Uh, okay, we're going to uh, finish our interview with a short Q&A, so question answer. Uh, please answer the first thing that comes up to your mind, okay? I'll try to be quick. The best surfboard that you ever ridden. The best surfboard. Uh, that one's a hard one. There's uh, three of them that come to my mind. One would be uh, the Bing uh, David Nueva Nose Rider. Beautiful. Amazing. And the next one would be would be uh, a Mike Henson down rail surfboard uh, oh. that he made me a bunch of them uh, for the Jimi Hendrix uh, movie. And uh, this is the difference between the Bing and uh, the Hensons. When I when I had uh, ten boards made for me, and I just got back from uh, being in being on the road for like four or five months, Mike made me ten of these surfboards. They were all down rail boards. Wow. You see, back back when Bing made his boards and I wrote them, there were fifty fifty rails on them. And now when Henson made my set of boards, and we're we're playing around with this. Mine came up with the down rail boards. They were flat on the bottom, and they, the rails went down to the bottom of the board. Those are the down rail boards. And we, we came out with that, and everybody laughed at us and said, uh, that would never work. And then now you look at what everybody's in the water on. They're all yeah. riding flat down rail boards. So uh, the joke's on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, ahead of time, right? Yeah, we were just a little bit ahead of time, you know, and all that. Yeah, but it was... Uh, we were just trying to show people that, you know, we do have stuff that really works. And they were, they were, you know, buying into it, but now everybody's into it, you know? Yeah, plus a great a great shipper and a great surfer. Yeah, we, we, we uh, incredible things. We, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did the transition from that, that kind of surfboards, which was slow into a little bit more high speed, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the boards went faster, and then uh, when they went short, came out with a board called the Fist. Yes. That was a twin fin board. It was small, stocky, and they went super fast. And my design on that was to, uh, it was like a catamaran. You know, when the wind blows on it, you blow that outside all out of the water, and you just went fast. Yeah, not not like uh, as fast as the first uh, maybe balsa surfboards of uh, thirty kilos, but at least those were maneuverable, right? You could control them. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like sailing a catamaran. That's what the fish remind me of when I when we did this. Sad. You know, we we change the fin setups on them so they they really go real quick, and the the outside fin would come out of the water, and you be in less drag. You know, as you turned and did everything. Uh, who is, in your opinion, uh, the best shaper of all time? That's a hard one. You know why? Know. Because it's from the beginning to, to now. Uh, now you got, what, probably 50,000 guys that shape boards. Yeah. <laughs> Even <laughs> <But> more, maybe. <laughs> yeah. They, they copied, they get boards that are pre-shaped, you know, from guys from a long time ago, you know? Yeah. The machine, you know, they got that little computer. Of course, of course. Easy. And all they do is just find Sanum and... Uh, Take off a little here and a little there. Yeah, so I see what you mean. But if, uh, let's say you had to take one of your era, which one? You one of my that? favorite shapers would be uh, Mike Henson. Oh, okay, okay. Definitely. Because he kind of changed the whole sport when we were showing uh, what the down rail surfboards were doing. 
Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you for your answer. Personal question, your favorite song? Um, uh, there's many of them. Uh, one would be Jimi Hendrix, The Watchtower. Yeah, fantastic, right? All along The Watchtower? Yeah, the Bob Dylan one that uh, he, he made like uh, his version, right? This the, the... Yeah, his version of Bob Dylan's song, The Watchtower. Yeah, amazing. Um, your favorite surf spot? I would say uh, Fiji. Wow. Cloud, cloud break in Fiji, the island of Fiji. You, you served there many times, I guess, right? I served there in a commercial for uh, Budweiser once. Okay. And uh, they had me doing a commercial for Budweiser there, and it was really cool. Your favorite surfer of all time? There's so many of them, so many of them. They all had their own niche, you know, and they're all different. It's really hard for me. Uh, One that I you admire say, very, very much. I say uh, Takeyama. I grew up okay. on him. Of course. And He's... probably Dad Young yeah. and Mike Hinson. And Mike Hinson. Okay, okay, okay. They actually, you know, like uh, both Shaper and Surfer. Maybe not, not Young, not, but... But Schaefer and Surfer Takayama and Inson. Um, the last question is a bit unusual. I ask everybody on the show. So Nat Young answer to this, uh, Joy Cabell answer to this, Greg Knoll answer to this, Fred Emmings answer to this. So uh, uh, it's gonna be weird, but uh, I ask you anyway. I want to know your best relationship advice. Keep surfing. It's healthy for you. And, uh, you know, enjoy the sport, you know, like like I did, you know, just have fun. Yeah. Have fun in everything you do is the best uh, advice that uh, we can get. We can give, right, okay. as a human being. OK, well, I'm coming out with the book real soon. And yeah. uh, also uh, I'm coming out with David Nueva's Surf Company. Yes, I saw that. You want to tell me more mm -hmm. about it? Yeah, we're going to start that back up. It's a lot of retro stuff I did a long time ago with the surfboards. The fish will be the first one that I'm going to come out with. And we're coming out with the whole thing, like T-shirts, shorts, all that stuff. When the, this was supposed to be online or is already online? It's going to be online soon. I'd say maybe, you know, we're working on it now, you know, since... Uh, the wife isn't involved, you know, like she has been. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do the company. <laughs> okay, okay. And uh, you're going to have also surfboards? Yeah, we're going to start out with the T-shirts, surfboards. It's all going to be online, sign pictures and all that stuff. Amazing. And it's called it's going to be called David Nueva Surf Company. Amazing. I will uh, speak with Kai and when things are uh, live, count on me to support you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. David, for being on the show with me today. And I look forward to talk to you very soon. Okay. Aloha. And uh, Aloha. thank you for the interview. Love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Mahalo. Hi, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed our today's episode. If you want to know more about us, please follow www.thetempleofsurf.com and all our social media. Mahalo. Mahalo.